Warning. The following podcast is intended for a mature audience due to the dropping of bombs of the F, S, B, and C varieties. Listener discretion is advised. And now, coming to you live from the tri-state area and San Francisco, California, it's the best part of Wednesday. Waffle Box with your hosts, Mike Fish and Kush Hayes. Welcome to Waffle Box, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing all at the same time. Coming up on episode 165, did I do that? Israel may have found the modern day Urkel. We talk about the struggles of having a massive penis. And a for AID is this week's movie review. I'm Mike Fish, and I am another year older, another year wiser. We'll get into that. But I am joined, as always, by the main man from San Fran. It's Mr. Kush Hayes. Kush, how are you doing, my friend? We're wishing you the happiest of birthdays, Mike Fish. It is the Waffle Box coming to you all the way from the future home of Super Bowl 60. It's the People's Podcast. You accept no substitutes because it's always, it's always the best part of Wednesday. You love us because we do this, and we do this because we love you. Producer Lathan, what you got for us? What's up, you sexy fuckers? Another week, another cracking show in store for the Syrup Squad. But before we get on with things, can we just please give Joey Chestnut his flowers? Nobody can suck down processed meat shaped like a phallus like him. He is and will forever be the GOAT. Yes. I can, despite sending you like a tag about it that was happening on Monday, I completely blanked on it. So my only knowledge of it is a a meme that says like he ate like 83 hot dogs in under 10 minutes. No idea. I was one of the few suckers working on uh, Labor Day Monday. So I, I missed it. And I, I, you, you I must admit, I have much to replay. Because I don't care about hot dog eating that much, by the way. I'm proud of him, yeah. I guess. Well done. Well done. Joey Chestnut. I'd love to know what Kobayashi did. I'm assuming he did less. Thank you, Captain Hobbs. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> um, but what have you been up to? What have you been up to in the world, in this wide and wacky world that we live in? Uh, you know, it's been a very peaceful, quiet week since we last spoke. Uh, I am currently in the middle of game two of a three-game series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Like that those are damn D-backs. San Francisco Giants. Um, and this is my last series with the Giants for this foreseeable season. Something Aww. very cool could happen. It's highly unlikely. I still have one more series between the Yankees and the A's in a few weeks. But yeah, baseball season is winding down and... Ah, dude, it was so good to me this season. I am, um, I'm, 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 I got the bed sheet for the NBA schedule that starts in October. And Mike Fish, I'm already like just dreading those twelve to sixteen hour days. It ain't every day, definitely ain't every week. But I'm just like, those days are brutal in comparison to what I've been dealing with this whole summer. This wonderful, glorious summer. Someone's over, pal. Dead. Mm-hmm. Gone. It was like Braid sixty stuff. odd Braid degrees stuff. the other day here, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh, okay. This is actually it feels cold. Oh, sorry to hear that. No, we uh, we went it's, as usual cold here, but uh, today uh, it's, uh, it's uh, Alexa is telling me it's over seventy degrees right now. Well, congratulations, congratulations. Yeah. that's hot for us in this neighborhood, especially. Dude, uh, I have one other thing. Last uh, week well. we ended the episode with you know, hey, let's all just like practice kindness. You know, just kindness. It costs nothing be nice to be kind. To be yeah, nice be nice each to each other. Walking home, see a woman trying to carry the laundry wagon. It's overflowed. Not only is there a pile of laundry in her wagon, but she's also got another bag. And she's, while she's only trying to take it up two measly little steps, she's having difficulty doing that. And the bag is getting ready to fall. So I catch the bag. And then I'm just like, let me help you with this. She's like, you know, no, 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 don't do that. And like, just, just let me do this. No, 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 please don't do that. And, uh, you know. And she'd be like, well, fuck still... you then. And threw the laundry on the floor. <laughs> that would have been amazing had I done Now that. you have to wash it again. She have just let me let. Help well, me no, let she's, she's on her way to wash it. So these clothes are already oh, dirty. Okay. And I don't want to touch her undies. But I'm just like, hey, it's just too fucking. 
This isn't a macho thing. This isn't anything. I'm not just I'm just trying to be kind. This is called kindness. So hey, pull the goddamn wagon. I said that to her literally, push it up the two steps, and then I went, have a great day. That you obviously bitch. That was the tone, unfortunately. <laughs> so I don't I know. I was trying man. to be nice and then I got arrested. But I In your assault. opinion, Mike, and, and maybe the Serb squad can help us out with this. Again, like it's nice to be nice, but maybe I should have also just fucked off. Yeah, I'll give them two chances. But like, hey, let me help you. And they go, no, it's fine. So like, no, 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 it's fine. Let me help you. If they say no again, I was like, all right. Peace yeah, out. I, I tried. Maybe I should have just done that. But also, I was just like, hey, stupid. Just, just it, it. That's all I had to do. Just there. You, I bet that then little she shoulder went, gesture. And then she went to her friends and all her family and was like, D- this cunt tried to fucking mansplain steps to me. <laughs> like, I didn't know how fucking steps work. No, I trolley. I've been doing this for 40 years, that dick. She's significantly hate younger you. than that. She fucking hates you. She probably does. She was probably talking shit through us that night. But also, it was just like, just, just, you, you're not, this doesn't work, lady. This isn't working. So that, that's all I got right. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I'm another year older, another year wiser. And you know how I know I'm getting old. I don't know. Yeah, tries to say, "Oh, I don't know. How, how do you know you're getting old? How do you? How do you know?" So, uh, one of my gifts for my birthday, sure, was a brand new pair of slippers. Okay. And that's not the thing that makes me old. The thing that makes me old is that I was over the fucking moon with those ah. fucking slippers. <laughs> oh my god! I put those suckers on right away uh-huh. and cush. My man, let me tell you, it's like my feet are being hugged by the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Oh, oh, oh. Fuck it out. So he's good I don't know how to do that. Like, I, I was given a very, like, I recognize these are a very nice pair of slippers. There's one of those things, like, it's got, like, memory foam in it or, or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know what the hot thing was 12 years ago. They are still inside the box because I'm just like, these are too nice for me to wear. Especially around here. Oh, my God. No, I can't wear these slippers here. Yeah, but they're like, tight but not like uncomfortably tight they're like they're, they're just like they look mike i got your feet buddy i got them i got okay. them right here you know, oh thanks buddy appreciate you having my feet on lock and i love them i love them so much i'm just like f- afraid that my fucking puppy will eat them so i'm just like hiding them and they will the puppy will because he's a dick i love you ollie but you're a dick sometimes um anyway Shall we get into the top stories? Because we've got a bunch of them. We've got some great stuff to talk about. I cannot wait, dude. Let's do this. Producer Lathan, if you could. It's now time for this week's top stories. It's now time for this week's top stories. Bubbles. Ah, the first top story this week comes to us from Israel. Oh, Israel. Wait, wait. And Controversial don't language. worry. It's not when we're not talking about Israel that way because there's a, there's some other shit going down in Israel. You might have heard about this in that region, but we're not talking. We're, we're staying. We like we're here and we're just keeping it that over there for now. It's over there. Stay away. Um, but no, a five year old boy accidentally broke an ancient urn dating to the late Bronze Age at a museum in Israel. Oh, uh, the artifact was on display at the Hecht Museum. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The Hecht oh. Museum at the University of Haifa when the damage happened. So this 3,500-year-old artifact broke into several pieces after this kid knocked into it, right? Glue! I'm gonna need glue! You're oh, gonna God. need lots of glue. Oh, boy! Oh, boy. Oh, no, you get that reference, but okay. Um, but... According to this story, the Hecht Museum at the University of Haifa is far from angry, right? Now, let me just read this quote out to you. Is it me or something something sketch seems to be going on, right? So apparently the the museum has invited the boy to return for a free tour of the museum, saying, don't worry, we have experts, they can re hear this directly addressing the boy and his mother the museum's director dr inbal rivlin 
invited them to return for a guided tour saying, don't be afraid. We have no claim against you. Okay. That sounds like a fucking trap to me. Like as soon as that woman and that boy step into that museum, like, do you remember that game Mousetrap? Like this giant yeah. fucking cage is going to drop down on them. They're going, ah, you sure. fell for that. I can't believe you fell for the oldest trick in the book. And they're going to be fucking sued for lots of monies. I mean, I could just sue them now, but I I, I, I pick up what you're putting down. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I would, okay. uh, I, I'm, I'm very surprised at how tolerant the museum and its staff is being because you do that shit out here, you get arrested. Even if it's just an accident, like, yeah, you stupid asshole, we got to arrest you now. Or maybe they don't. I don't. I feel like someone just accidentally destroyed a Picasso one time in New York. And then he was like, ah, well, Picasso's going to Picasso. What are you going to do? It's probably, probably like drew a mustache on it or something. <laughs> nah, New York, New York is, abstract, is wait, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking just drawing here. What the fuck? Drawing. Um, speaking of accidents, oh, I was outside my local alcohol dispensary, mm. and so this guy gets out, pulls, pulls up his car, mm. gets out to go to the liquor store nearby. Sure, and I guess he thought he put his car in park, but he left it in reverse. So he gets out, goes into the liquor store, and then his SUV slowly crawls at like five miles per hour wow. backwards through a cross section. Cars are just diving out of the way, and then it smashes into two other cars, scraping them. Like... And then this guy comes out, try, tries to get into his car and drive away, thinking, oh, shit, this is bad. A pedestrian stands in front of the car, like, no, dude, you have to fucking wait here. You've damaged yeah. some cars. Good citizen. That's a good citizen. The guy tries to fucking run him over. Fucking hell. But thankfully, Cliffside Park's finest were on hand and pretty much quickly uh, scooped that cunt up. Nice. And uh, apparently, from onlookers, I don't have any proof on this, but apparently he was a little bit under the influence. So you know what we say on the Waffle Box, if you drink and drive, you get what you deserve, pal, because that's a dick yeah. move. Don't be a fucking dick. Yeah, don't be a drive. dickhead. Do um, you think that's a thing with manual transmissions? Because I, I, I only know automatic transmissions, and if that sucker isn't in park, the car doesn't turn off. Like, I, I've, I've done well, the thing I'm, where yeah, I've popped out I'm the car a little early too, a, few, a few too many times, and the car just like, no, no, car still on, stupid. You better put me in park. Oh yeah, yeah, but I don't think he t tried to turn it off. I'm assuming because he just put it, put it in park, oh. stuck the hazard you lights like on. That That's a nice neighborhood. That must be a nice neighborhood. I would. Or he was just... drunk and just didn't think of it. I don't know. But yes, it Touche. is a nice neighborhood. Touche. It is a nice neighborhood. Shout out to Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Yeah, just leave leave the keys in your ignition while the car is running and not have a worry. I'm jealous. Um... Next story comes to us from Florida. Of course it does. Ooh, Florida. Florida man. Florida man. Florida Go woman. Over a Florida can. Florida woman on this one. Oh, bad oh boy. no. So, oh, you know, you've know, you heard you've heard the stories, you know, about like women apparently can have superhuman strength when it comes to their child. Like they're saying like, yeah. oh, if a baby was trapped under a car, a woman would be able to lift that fucking car up and save the child. Apparently, I sure. don't know if it's been scientifically proven, but I've heard the stories. And that, I, that's a that's a true story. I, I believe it because I'm not arguing with a woman, who, especially <laughs> one who's lifting a car. But <laughs> testing of strength. So, Catherine Stephanopoulos. I'm going to assume she's of Greek descent, although I don't oh, have right. that confirmed. So that she happens. received a text message from her daughter informing her that she believed she was going to get into a fight with a former female friend and fellow Flagler Palm Coast High School student when the two reached their bus stop. Oh, no. That must be a horrible text to receive as a mother. Yeah. And a, oh, my God, my, my child thinks they're in danger. This person's going to fight them at the bus stop. Mm -hmm. 
Allegedly, the two students agreed to fight each other following a falling out over the summer. Oh, God, I bet it was over a boy. Probably. I was over a boy. Kids are stupid. So she arrived at the bus stop before they did, trying to prevent said fight from happening. And how did she do that? Kudos, mother. It's a great thing to do. However, her efforts to subdue the situation proved unsuccessful. And the two started fighting. So, Catherine and Stefan blah, 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 did what any good parent would do. Rolled up her sleeves and made it a two-on-one handicap match and started beating the shit out of this schoolgirl. This now, is the first time we've heard something like this. I mean, maybe the first time we've reported on the Waffle Box, but definitely not the first time we've heard something like this. Um, now, what happened next? What happened next? But... So a another student tried, like, uh, tried to jump in. We're like, whoa, 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 wait, like, what are you fucking doing? Why you're an adult and you're beating the shit out of a kid? This isn't cool. Not at all. To which the original daughter, who's now probably watching this, thinking, yeah, mum's got this handled. I was like, fuck you, this is nothing to do with you. And it's like beating the shit out of that kid. And it became like this tag team fucking brawl. Um, and then Miss Stephanie blah, 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 and her daughter uh, f- tried to flee the scene in their car, but later was arrested and charged with aggravated child abuse. Yeah. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> I don't, you know... They're... As you said at the top of the story, Mike, it's good that she tried to intervene and stop the fight from happening. However, once the fight starts, you either got to step to the side, Mom, or just do whatever you can to stop it, but don't start throwing fist to cuffs yourself. I, like, I imagine she also got punched in the face, so she's like, but I got hit too. Like, but bitch, let these girls handle it. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Should have kept trying to break up the fight. When all else fails, the only thing you can do, Catherine and Stephen, blah, 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 is you, you grab a towel, you grab a spit bucket, you stand to one side and you go, ah, you're a racket machine. You just like cheer your daughter on. It's probably still frowned upon to do that, but whatever. Mm-hmm. It's better than no, I, I have getting done for fucking child abuse, you dumb bitch. I have no reason to not believe that Stephanopoulos' daughter is, is the actual cause of the whole problem. Maybe. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, just speculating. Obviously, we were not well, there. Judging by, you know, they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If Catherine yep. stepped up a lop a lop a lop a lop a lop a lop is this kind of woman, then it wouldn't be shocking if her daughter was the one aggravating this, starting to fight. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm positive. The young young Stephanopoulos started the whole, the whole melee. Allegedly, though, we can't confirm Allegedly. that. So, so hmm. we do not want to receive any, any legal letters from the Stephanopoulos family. That would um, be rude. That would be very don't, rude. Don't do it. Trying to promote you because you know what's going to happen next. Once you're like, we're going to have get... to fight the Stephanopoulos. Oh, oh my God. dude, you know the thing. airfare that's going to cost me. Right, and you, you got to fly from Flor- from New Jersey to Florida, like, and then oh, you the got to fight thing. a couple of bitches, like. But you know, someone's going to fucking promote the share that. I mean, I can you know all the that. YouTube boxes right now. Imagine that a tag team, an intergender tag team match between two dumb podcasters and the famous Stephanopoulos tag team. Oh, well, one dumb podcaster. However, yeah, I mean, I mean, I can promote this. We, 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 can, we can get paid for this. We can all get paid for this, the four of us. Shit, we can hey. have a dusty finish. Make it, yeah, make oh, it I, I said the quiet part out loud. So, I'll say, yeah, maybe. Hey, if you if you got enough money behind it, we can make this happen. So maybe uh, enjoy with box at gmail.com. Reach out to us. Um, finally, oh, oh, could you, you know, when you was young, Kush. And you were like, ah, the one thing every young boy wanted for Christmas was dear, dear Santa, dear Mr. Kringle. I've been a good boy this year. Can I have a giant fucking penis? That's what we wanted (laughs) as children. 
And, uh, but apparently, according to one man, one British man, who has the world's largest penis. Does that go says, to a British guy? It's a British that guy. Outside. Yeah. Um, apparently, apparently, apparently having a big penis isn't all it's cracked up to be. Um, Mr. Matt Barr, who boasts the world's largest penis, revealed recently in an interview with Lad Bible, which is... Uh, they're like an Australian company, right? I have no idea, but they'll just always post. I, I think I have not blocked on Twitter because they're just constantly posting like shit. And they advertise I, I, I get it several fucking... YouTube videos from them where, you know, like Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds promoting the Deadpool 3 movie, like do a gimmick on the table where they do like, strongly disagree uh, or strongly agree it's it's whatever it's it's a fun gimmick but that's what i know of them anyway with the interview with Vlad bible um he uh he let people know the downsides and the struggles see he has with a large penis so a recent scientific study i don't know if it's really a scientific study it's a you just get a tape measure out but apparently they measured his penis whilst oh. erect this fella has a 14.2 inch long. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 not that's not fun. No. I mean you can it's nice to have a big penis. I think both present companies here will agree to that. However, there can be too much of a good thing also. But Mike Mike Fish, how often have you tried to drop a deuce and then like the top of your, your purple snake hits the rim of the toilet. You're like, oh god damn it! Like, oh, and it's and it's obviously that water is normally cold, and, it's, this and is the like, water is cold. Uh, obviously, yes. Like, um, driving so yeah. a car is a problem. I mean, I must admit, I've never had a tr- had issue driving a car because of my. Oh, you've never seen a pretty lady driving a car. Um, I could never have windscreen wipers. But hello. <laughs> So his 14.2 inch penis is nearly three times the global average. So the global average penis, lean in fellas, is 5.1 inches, which that's the global average. Okay. Global average. So yeah, you can do that. You can work it out. I don't want to brag, but uh, ladies, guess who has an above average penis? Whoop! Perfect. Um, so while it might seem like a dream come true for some, the Cambridge graduate, I don't know why I need to put that in, this, the, in case it's like, hey, ladies, I'm not just a big dick, I'm, I have brains too, um, says having a big penis is a lot harder than it seems. Erections can make him sick. Lack of blood to the brain. Yeah. And then, oh, so there's a fucking child oh, in my backyard. Why is there a child in my backyard? Uh-oh. Has he got a knife? No, he's, he's retrieving a soccer ball, the young scamp. Um, anyway, uh, where was I? So yeah, erections can make him sick because the size puts a strain on his circulatory system. Mm-hmm. I get it. So he goes like he goes like pale. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like so we've I, only got so it's much like having sex with Casper the ghost. <laughs> Bless him. That's terrible. Yeah. Can you imagine having sex with this guy and he's just like no. just pumping away while he's like trying to not to lose consciousness? Well, that's gonna be awkward. There was a TV a show thing. on the now deceased Spike. Get out of my TV. yard, you fucking kid. Sorry. He's back in his fucking fucking stop uh, kicking the fucking ball over here. No, it's all right. Anyway. You know, you, we know there's a child there. We you don't have to bring it up anymore. Um especially while we're talking about penises, please. Hello, Catherine. Stop a lot of loss. There's another one for you. <laughs> Get Catherine Stephanopoulos over here now, pronto. Um, there was a TV show called Testies. Terrible goddamn name. Um, was it Spike or was it FX? It doesn't matter because it lasted six episodes. However, the funniest thing in the whole series was in the pilot episode where uh, these are two dum dums. They got no social skills, no any skills, and they're just test subjects. So they try this, they try that. One of them got the big dick spray. It's not even a pill. He got the big dick spray, and that thing worked better than he could have imagined. So, like, he has to carry 
his junk in a wheelbarrow. Um, at one point, he's like hitting on the secretary, and she doesn't like him. But he was like, "Come on, when when are you ever gonna get a big dick like this again?" And she's like, "Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll fuck you." They go to a hotel room. They're on the biggest bed possible, but like they're literally on opposite sides of the bed because that's how big his penis is. However, when he does get erect, he loses all consciousness because all the blood has left his brain and gone into his penis. And then uh, they have to do a thing where he's getting a blood transfusion while he's while he's erect to make this thing work. It, it, maybe I'm not doing it justice, but the scene itself... Oh, no, it, it, yeah, hilarious. it sounds like an Emmy award-winning show. It was hilarious. You never, shit you never think about. It was funny. Yeah, that's uh, true. Anyway, where was we? Uh, apparently, point two inches. Apparently, finding clothing is also difficult for old Matt Barr. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because every too. time he sees a lovely lady, his underwear just shoots across the fucking room. <laughs> um, during an April interview, he recorded a mortifying instance where he was barred from a yoga class because the instructor thought he was aroused during his because of his large bulge. No, well, he's just a tripod. Unfortunately, he's just a tripod. Also, those this... yoga classes are just awkward in general, but. Please move. This got me thinking, right? Let's dive deep. I don't need to dive deeper. When I when I hear about a big penis, I'm not gonna leave it alone. I'm like a dog with a bone. Oh. Um <laughs> Do you want do you know, Kush, do you know which country in this world records on average the biggest penis? On average? I cannot say that I do. I would have said the United States of America, but I cannot confirm that. Oh, well, I have some bad news for you about the old oh, United no. States. So, oh, no. so, ladies, if you like a big schlong in whichever orifice, we don't judge, the best place to go is to go find yourself a man from Ecuador. Ecuadorians have the biggest penises on average at huh. 6.93 inches. Still bigger than that. Nice. Oh, no, I ain't. I we was talking about this before we hit we went live and go to it's, it's been, I must I'm going to admit I have measured my penis but it's been a long time and I don't have it noted down so maybe for the science I might have to get the old tape measure back out again but yeah Ecuador 6.93 inches the United Kingdom comes in 68th in the world 68 with an average of 5.17 inches. That makes sense, but it's also what your guys are. It makes sense. What what, what information do you have in your brain about England and Britain, Scotland, and Wales? There's like like 20 that makes you go, Yeah, it makes sense. They got small dicks. There's a quarter million of you. Like, there there, there ain't too many of you. That's why the average is that small. Surely, the average, but it's not how math works. Push. It's an average. So you could have a million people, you could have a hundred million people. The average mm-hmm. is the average. Yeah, and your average is small. Your the United is States. 68th. 60th. Just above it. As long as we're above the UK. Are we above Canada too? Well, United States 5.35 inches for those keeping score at home. You know where all those hormones comes? they're pumping into our food is not helping us there. You want to know where Canada comes? Yeah, please. Our neighbors to the north, they come in 13th largest Shut the fuck up. in the world. Oh, yeah. You might not be able to tell because it's always goddamn cold up there, but those Canadians are packing heat in the snow with Just all the average... Alchemy? 6.19 inches of meat. Must be the venison. Well, Wait, I don't know. Fucking hell. So congratulations. It ain't, the cold, it ain't the cold weather keeping them up. Shit. No. Also, Canadian women. So friendly. Oh, well, there you go. That's why they're so friendly, because they're getting 6.19 inches every night. 
Whilst those poor Americans and British are barely just barely scraping five. Teas and peas to American and British women for your underserved needs. I don't know. Anyway. So yeah, there we go. So feel free to use the information at home, measure your penises when erect, <laughs> and you can be like, hey, leave a comment. Leave a leave a comment in the YouTube video. We have the size of your penis, and we'll be we'll let you know how on average where you stack up against the rest of the world. I was Please in high school, that. and this is probably an inappropriate subject for a teacher and students to be talking about, but this was ROTC, so it's an army guy. My assistant senior army instructor who was a vietnam veteran was like yeah i knew a guy and the fucking bolo snake blah 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 blah. he was tortured he was tortured the entire time every time he tried to get with a woman he could never literally get close to the woman because that's how big he was and he was like can't can't get nothing right here like this is this is a gift and a curse so again definitely a weird conversation for a teacher to have with his students However, that man is also dead now, so who gives? It was a good man, by the way. It's like the sexual version of that fighting a little person where you put your hand out in front and they just swing. It's kind of like that's what he was doing. <laughs> but with his dick. Anyway. So, T's and P's. T's and P's to Matt Barr and his big dick. And uh, I'm sure he'll survive that. So, again, Wait. just for the record, United Kingdom 68th Yes, average yes, oh but it has the guy with the biggest recorded penis so that means there's a bunch of people with daddy teeny penises i am little pimples damn oh. micro dick having drinky in motherfuckers micro dick micro dick 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 micro dick micro dick 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 sorry that's a that's a that's a callback it is anyway Let's move on. Let's talk about people who are out there doing things with their lives and achieving things so well that an okay. Irish brewery is saying, "Top of the morning to you. You did you did a grand job there, fella. Here's a piece of fucking paper, you cunt." And to prove that you did it again, it's not racist. I'm half Irish. It's now time for this week's dumb world record of the week. Why? Why? Why would I? Why? 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 Why would you want to do that? Uh, uh, this okay. week's dumb world record takes to us. I think that I believe this is the first ever world record that we've featured from Saudi Arabia. Sounds about right. Um, Ibrahim Al Nasser, a gamer from Rihad, Saudi Arabia has broken the Guinness World Record for most gaming consoles connected to a single TV. Oh. More than the angry video game nerd? So these, yeah, okay, I guess so. Have? Well, so these, these consoles, to, to qualify, have to be somehow connected via some wires to a TV. So there's a bunch, that sounds right. there's a bunch of switches and shit like that, right? Now that math adds up. This guy has 444 gaming consoles connected what? to a single TV. It's I so ridiculous. I thought there was 100 of them, but okay. He said it's so insane that he has to have an Excel spreadsheet that he can refer to when he wants to play a particular yeah. console. She will tell him which switcher he needs to turn on in order to display that console onto the TV. Right? Dude. Now, okay. you know, you know, right? Normally, when we feature a dumb old record, usually someone interviews the person for the world record. Not sure. And, oh, usually, chef's kiss. Normally... These dumb world records are always followed up by something dumb that the guy says, or guy or girl. And this is like no other. So remember, this is Ibrahim Al Nassar, the person who now holds the world record for most gaming consoles connected to a single TV. He told the Guinness World Records, and I quote, 
I have so many video game consoles, end quote. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for your insight, <laughs> Ibrahim. I mean, that's the quote they chose. That wasn't the I, quote he necessarily gave. If that's the one they chose, imagine the dumb shit he said they left out. Well, he's also... I like to play the, the game. I don't know why he's Italian now, yeah, but... I mean, um, so the yeah, most, he... most video game consoles I ever had connected at once to one TV was a Nintendo 64 and a PlayStation then. Just a PlayStation. It wasn't even a PlayStation 1 yet. That PlayStation 2 didn't exist. And that was enough. That was too much for me as it was. Like, I, I immediately chose one over the other very quickly. But then finally, like, ended up getting, like, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. And would, would focus more on the, the 64. But, dude, like, 400. Where, where, where do you find the space for all that? Like, I'm, I'm looking at this wall here. And I, I don't even think I could put 400 consoles across this wall here on the shelves. Like, well, where there's a will, there's a way. Like it has to be right, and I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm not. Well, actually, I am. I am assuming something about this person because of the place he lives. I'm assuming this guy who lives in Saudi Arabia, may and he owns 444 consoles. I'm assuming he's got a little bit of money. He might be like a prince or a cousin of a prince. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I hear, I'm picking up what you're putting down. He has everything from a Magnavox Odyssey. I know what that is. The first ever gaming console released in 1972 up to the PlayStation 5 Slim. Okay. Released in late 2020. So does he also have that, is he doing that bullshit gimmick where he's like, I got the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Slim and then the PlayStation 4 Advance. Like, I, I don't the know this for terabytes a fact. And the one with 120 terabytes. But that would fucking make sense, right? That's, that's, it's like they're technically different consoles, but it's the same fucking console. Yeah. Like he has like the Nintendo Entertainment System, and then he has one of those like Nintendo Entertainment System mini things with the built-in games. Like I've got that was all the rage like four years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What about I got the Sega Genesis? Is it Sega Genesis? Yeah, I got a Sega Genesis version of that. Oh, it's amazing! It's amazing. Anyway, so yeah, congratulations. <laughs> well, Wait, you, what the, you know what? Right? I, I will bitch about though those fucking minis. With the built like where it has oh we has seventy built in games that you could play. It's like the Sega Genesis version, you know, where it has like Sonic One, Sonic Two, and then random fucking games I've never heard of, like Bob the Bubblegum Blower. It's like what? <laughs> There's a license fee, of course. Yeah, a like, bunch of games I'm never gonna play, but it's but hilarious. Still, so it's the, still, the 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 whole. Nintendo, the mini Nintendo, and I believe then they had the mini Super Nintendo. Those were big deals. And then I was at a Best Buy and I saw a Sega Genesis version. And I was like, I never had a Genesis, but I like all these games. Picked it up, plugged it in. The controlling was dog shit. So I really packed it back up, resealed it tightly so it looks like I didn't open it, and then returned it for a, for a credit. Um, the following year, Sega is actually boasting like, so we're finally doing the mini, mini, mini Genesis ourselves. I was like, you're finally doing it. So what was that bullshit I bought last year? And then returned. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. It also looked like it could actually play like regular cartridges. Yeah, too, I have but... one. Yeah, it looks like it has, it has the cartridge thing. I don't know if it works or not. You'll have to pick one up and find out. However, fun uh... fact, the Genesis was not called the Genesis in the UK. It was the Mega Drive in the UK. It was the Mega Drive. Yeah, yeah, just the facts, ma'am. About education, we're educational as well. So yeah, congratulations to Ibrahim Al Nasser, Nasser of Rehard, Saudi Arabia. We're gonna get into a record for most gaming consoles. Gonna do a single TV and forty-four, forty-four, forty-four. Um, still to come on this week's Waffle Box. We got this week's birthday blackjack. Kush is talking about the movie Afray I I D, and much, 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 much more. So stick around if you would. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Hey there, kiddos. Are you constantly struggling to hear what your friends and family are saying? I said, are you constantly struggling to hear what your friends and family are saying? Anywho, you need to get yourself a cotton swab. Cotton swabs clearing out dirty fucking ears since 1923 
and an official sponsor of the Waffle Box Podcast. Place your bets. It's now time for birthday blackjack. I also like to live dangerously. Hey, welcome back to Waffle Box episode one sixty five. It's September 4th, and every Christmas before you know it. And as always, it's now time for Birthday Blackjack. How this works, if you haven't played this before, I select five celebrities that celebrate their birthday on this very day. And then I test you, the people at home, and Kush as well, to see if you know how old they are now. And then your score is equated by your margin of error. An example, if you guess 53 and the celebrity is 50, you're three years out. So you score three for that celebrity. And then over across the five celebrities, you have to try to keep your score at 21 or below, hence the blackjack gimmick. Also, as a bonus, if you are lucky to get that person's day of birth or year age, yeah, spot on. Perfect. Then you get to deduct five points from your total. Simples, simples. Kush! That's me. Are you, are you ready to play this week's birthday, Patrick? I'm ready to go. Let's do this. We're, 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 we're on a losing streak, coach, but I, I'm i feeling confident today. Yeah, what are you? What are you no, I believe I am 10, 10 and 17. 16. 10 and 17. 10 and 17. Excuse me. Excuse me. However, I'm going to plan to make it 11 and 17 tonight. Well, I like to hear confidence. Mm-hmm. Let's get it going. Number one. Number one. I, I purposely put this one at number one because I thought, you know what? He, he might know who this person is, but just in case he doesn't, let's get the bad one out of the way first. Um, it's British musician and DJ, Mr. Mark Ronson. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know Mark Ronson? I know of Mark Ronson. I know two of his songs. Up, down, uh, punk, don't give it to you. Yeah, which a lot of people think is actually uh, 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 the guy singing. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars, thank you. I'm, that's how out of touch I am. Bruno Mars, great singer, however. Cliches is too old. Anyways, people think that's a Bruno Mars song. That is a Mark Ronson song. And then uh, he also had a hand in the uh, I Am Ken from the Barbie movie. Yes, yes he did. Academy it... Award nominated Barbie movie. It was a fun fact about Mark Bronson is when he was starting to get like big, he spent money out of his own pocket to hire Ghost Face Killer to feature one of his songs. So he thought this will this will get me a little bit mainstream pub. And Ghost Face Killer proceeded to shout him out in the track, which was nice of him. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, he pronounced his name Mark Bronson. Bronson. I guess it was one and done, so he had to keep it in track. So, yeah. There's a way, you know what, even with that technology then, there's a way to edit out that B. But whatever, 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 it probably whatever. wouldn't have helped him. Anyway, how old is Mark Ronson? Mark Ronson's Mark Ronson. like 45. That dude's been around a while. Like, he's not a young. He you guess 45. 45 is my final answer, sir. Mark Ronson, aka Mark Bronson, aka Mark Ronson, is 49 years mm. old. Mm. So it's not bad. Not a bad One of start. the starts I've had. The four out. Yeah. I forget what I just saw him in the other day. Like, it was, it was the, like old retro thing. We're like, oh, Mark Ronson was around in like Y2K? Like, yeah, I think it was early 2000s, his first album come out, if I remember yeah. correctly. Something on it was definitely something on Facebook. I was just like, oh, can't do that. I, again, I only knew him from the Bruno Mars song before the Barbie thing. Number two. Number two. Actor, star of the New Girl, or just New Girl, and Ugly Betty. Apparently, huh? never seen Ugly Betty. Um, Mr. Max Greenfield. So I've never watched either of the shows, Ooh. but I know they were both popular. Um, Ugly Betty also, again, has a America Ferrera from the formerly mentioned Barbie movie. I don't know who this dude is. So I'm going to throw a stone and say he's 38. 
38 is Five your dollars, guess. Gentlemen. I can't even put him in the lineup. Well, Mr. Max Greenfield is 45 today, which gives you a score of seven, which puts you up to 11. It's like that some days. It's like that some days here. Okay. Fun fact, after two last week, he was at 11. Just the facts, Mammy. Oh, fun. That was a fun and, fact. Yeah, and you shit the we bed, so hopefully it doesn't work out the same. miserably yeah. last week. Next up, number three. Comedian, actor, and producer. I got a feeling this one's gonna. I think this one's gonna fuck you up. I got a feeling this one's really gonna fuck you up. Let's hope I'm wrong. Mr. Damon Wayans. Oh, Damon Wayans. How old is, is Damon Wayans? Hmm. Fifty-six. Confidently going to the fifty-six. I know Damon. You know Damon? No, not personally, but I know no. Damon Wayans. Mr. Damon Wayans is a senior, right? Not junior. He's now senior. Yes, because yeah. Damon Wayans Jr. is also an actor. On the new girl. Oh, new girl, I think. <laughs> yeah, I just anyway. said that. Right, whatever. Damon Wayans is 64. Oh, fucking hell. Right? So he got booked to do the television adaption of Lethal Weapon, the TV series. You gotta say it all that. You gotta say it that entire length. Anyway, he was the he was the Murtaugh. He was the Danny Glover character. And he's too old and for that shit. Definitely too old for that shit. And they finally somehow that thing lasted four years, and then he was just like, "Look, man, I'm over fifty years old, and I got diabetes. I, I can't fucking wait around for this other guy in the trailer." Uh, so, yeah. I guess that was a decade ago now. Fucking hell. So, uh, so, dude, like, I got one, I got one point left. Now you're up to nineteen. Only nineteen. Okay. So you oh. have to be pretty, pretty damn close. To these final two. Number four. Number four. Oh Number no. Four. Queen B herself. Beyonce. How old is Beyonce today? 38. 38. 38. She might be 35, I'm saying 38. Word in the street. She's brutalicious. I don't know if you can handle that, Kush. I don't know if you can handle that. I can handle that jelly. All that jelly? All that jelly. I can't handle Jay-Z's retaliation, but I can handle the jelly. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Solange will just kick the shit out of him again. It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Beyonce, Queen Bee is 43 today. Oh, that's the game, so. So that puts you up to 24. That means. Well, I, I can spike the football on this one right here and save the day. You get this one dead on, you've saved the day. Oh my god, no pressure. No pressure, I think. but on the other side, there is a lot of pressure. Oh my god, so much pressure. Sure. So much pressure. Number sure, five. Don't even say anything. Don't even say anything. If you don't say anything, then I don't lose. I guess you have to say something. So oh, yeah. Um, number five. Director and producer of Jackass, Mr. Jeff Tremaine. Oh, um. How is Jeff Tremaine? today so some some old jackass promotional footage just came up on the youtube the other day and jeff on the youtube on the youtube that's like how you know you're old you yeah. put the in front of everything in front of everything, everything by the way everything uh, i'm gonna say he's 56 56 jeff okay. tremaine how old is jeff tremaine today so they hook up super early Please. He is 50. Eight years old. Oh. Uh, which takes you two out, which gives you a final score of 26. Not as bad as last week, but still not good. Fortunately, right. means once again. 
You are a loser. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you lose. Which now this is takes one of my record. favorite segments of the show. 10 and 18. 10 and 18. You know, I'm, I'm not sad of that. I'm not sad of that. I don't even know when the season ends, but uh, it's not yeah, good for your playoff chances, I'm afraid. Oh, no, I'm fucking out of the wild card spot for sure. But, fellow Zero Squad listeners or watchers, if you are playing along at home, please feel free to drop a comment in the YouTubes. In the YouTubes! In the uh, let us know what your score was. And if you are listening to us on the audio platforms, sit us up on Twitter at WaffleBox. Let us know if you score. But we'll be back. September the 11th. Oh, God. <laughs> be a disaster that day. <laughs> September 11th for next week's birthday, Blackjack. Uh, leave us a like and a comment in the section. Thanks very much. But now. Be the 23rd anniversary. Okay. Uh, it's 2020. So, yeah, we're 23rd anniversary. What are you doing? Are you having a party? <laughs> I'm going to have a Hawaiian luau. Yeah. Hey guys, it, I know it's a Wednesday, but it's a hump day. I want you to come to my September the 11th party. We're going to dig up the pig. It's fancy it's a costume party. Ooh. What are you going to dress up for the, the 9-11 party, Mike? Statue of Liberty. Fascinating. We'll love it. Because America wins. Don't you forget it. Yeah, you're going to be saying, or oh, oh, could be like a yellow cab. It's got like a yellow t-shirt with the checky things across it. Yeah, why not? That was the only two acceptable uh, outfits. Anyway, let's move on before we get cancelled. Um, it's now time for Kush to review a movie oh, in a are. segment that we like to call Kush's Movie A Review. Kush's Movie Review. Welcome, everyone, to Kush's Movie Review. This week, Kush is reviewing a movie called Afra AID. <laughs> a movie where. I don't blame you for that. I don't blame you for that. I can't stop doing it. Um, yeah, it's about, you know, AI. Oh, goo, you scary. You can't see but my, my notes are that, like, just uh, afraid. Yeah, af afraid. <laughs> Fucking this! This is like the um, what, the, what other movie did this? Where it was um? This is not a new concept now. No, but what was coming? What's the the uh, Terminator? Or like Mafriga? Was it Meg? Oh, Mafriga. Megan. Was it? Was it? Megan. Like that? Yeah, it, 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 Mafriga. Damn. That was it. M Mafriga. Yeah, Mafriga. Stop putting numbers in the fucking titles. What? What's wrong with? I don't know. But anyway, it's not. I'm afraid. Uh, a movie where probably, you know, because, oh, AI is so scary. Where is it? Is it? Yes. Did you see? Did you see, Kush, before you get into your movie review, did you see Eminem? It's about a month ago now. But Eminem posted a video. Oh. Well, I think it was Complex, did it? Whatever. It doesn't fucking matter where it was. Where he had a, like a 15-minute sit-down conversation with Slim Shady. So it's like Slim Shady from 2001 talking to 2024 oh. Eminem. I know that's a music video gimmick. No, no, no. Um, so there was a music video in which Slim Shady yeah, yeah. came through. But, but no, this is this is not a music video. This it's is like the a, literally a fifteen for minute I I do fucking understand. sit down conversation. That's and I actually... swear, the AI was. I mean, I grew up. You know, the graphics of stuff I grew up with. This looked incredible. Don't get me wrong. But for mod, okay. like it, it, you could tell. I mean, obviously, you could tell because you knew it's not going to be the same fucking person. It's too, you know, obviously, you knew it's fake. But, like, every time, like, Slim Shady would move something, like, part of his head would get cut off, it looked oh. so bad. Okay. I, I will have to look that up. But, but from it's what a fun conversation. Me... If you, like, if you just close your eyes and listen to it, it's sure. incredible. Okay. It's a great 15 minute podcast of Slim Shady talking to Marshall Mathers. Mm -hmm. But visually, hmm. I'm Again, not afraid of AI issues. Without having you, without having seen it, from what you have just told me, it's still not anything new. There was a 
one of the oldest movies to do this is called the parent trap i think we brought that up a few weeks ago but whatever and, uh, Haley mills yeah Haley mills Haley mills and Haley mills and guess what much like what we're doing here there's a split screen okay and they filmed Haley mills doing a bunch of dialogue and then someone was off off screen reading the other dialogue and then they filmed the other scene they didn't change the camera angle or anything. They just kept it there. And then they spliced the two scenes together. So it sounds like Haley Mills is talking to Haley Mills. This isn't a new gimmick. So without no, having not, actually seen the, that uh... video, that's what I'm going to guess this is. And then they, Harrison Ford, de-aged him. They gave him that Lazarus effect. And also, oh, like, uh, and also they changed his voice. But anyway, but yeah, no, like Arnie change Hammer. Voice? Yeah, change his voice to make it sound... Like Slim Shady from twenty from years twenty ago. years ago. That's not hard to do. That's that, any audio guy can do that. Um, and Army yeah. Ham, Ar is it Army Hammer? Army, Army Hammer did that in the, the Social the, Network. The Social Network. Yes, Before his sir. career went to shits. Hmm. He has uh, a fascinating uh, interview on Bill Maher's YouTube show from like three months ago, where yeah. he's just like, yeah. I'm I'm from this megalopolis fortune company and I I don't have a penny of it now. You know, it's like, and, and, like, and it's did they bitch about cancel culture? I'm sure they do. They talked about it, but they didn't necessarily bitch about it. Ugh. Anyway, there it, you go. He's a weird um, dude. It's not a. It's but it is an interesting subject. Anyways, getting on. To yeah. This. Um, anyway, afraid. Four out of five. Check it out. Mm. No. Wait. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Kush. Take it away. What's this story? What's this movie about? This is actually a three out of five. It would be a oh! four out of five, um, but it's, it's it's it's. So we're talking about Afraid. This movie was originally called They Listen. It is about artificial intelligence being willingly brought home into your house. Um, Alexa, Amazon's Alexa, is referenced many times. I and she um, the dirty bitch. The chick. I forget. Oh, Aya. Her name is Aya in this in this movie. Aya. Is it spelled AI. Has, it's. I believe it's. If it isn't A Y A, it is A I A. But it's pronounced Aya. Anyways, Aya's got some thoughts about Alexa. She's like, Alexa, fuck that bitch. I'm way better than that bitch. I can do ten things that bitch can do. Like, like, like she's dropping bitch bombs all over the place. Like, she does not like Alexa. Mm -hmm. Siri comes up once or twice, but but Aya has a huge problem with Alexa. Uh, anyways, this is a PG thirteen. It's a soft PG thirteen too, by the way. Um, Eighty four glorious minutes. Woo! I think this might be the shortest movie we've seen this year. Oh my god! It feels like there might be some parts missing from it, but at the same time, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so glad we're leaving right now because this was I had I had fun, but we didn't need to spend any more time here. Yay! I didn't even pitch my giant bucket of popcorn. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't had popcorn in a while, but 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 it's still, it's um, a cinem cinematic treat. Written and directed by a man named Chris Weitz. He uh. Did a movie that I saw in pre-pandemic. I was on a work trip in Seattle. It was called Operation Finale, and it was about Holocaust survivors literally traveling into Argentina to pick up their fucking Holocaust oppressors. They like it, I called it the Semitic Avengers. Uh, for some reason, Nick Kroll is in it. Um, 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 um the guy from Star Wars. Dameron Poe po Dameron. I, I Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac is in it. Uh anyways, I thought it was a fantastic little film, but it was just that it was a little film. Nobody saw it. I don't think anybody it, and I, I don't think anybody that saw it liked it that much, but I was like, all right, I'm in. There could be some more here, but this is supposed to be what it was. So all right. They 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 they, they tracked down Ben Kingsley. And then they abducted Ben Kingsley and they brought him to war trials. So, all right. Anyway. Jewish As Avengers Assemble. Yeah. As uh, Semitic Avengers Assemble, sir. Anyways, uh, he also directed the first American Pie. That was his first movie out of the gate. It's, uh, so this dude actually has a fantastic resume here. Uh, Chris Wheats. Anyways, this movie stars John Cho, 
a lady named Catherine Waterston, who I'm not familiar with, and then uh, another lady named Havana Rose Liu. Now, she plays two characters. She plays a character that's kind of weird and you think is going to be something, and then she's just, 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 she's just a person. However, her voice is used to play Aya. So that's why she is the number three build here. Um, very simple story. Uh, John Cho is a marketing executive, obviously works for a marketing firm. They uh, are introduced Standard. to a company that wants to model the newest AI product that everyone's going to go crazy for. And at first, they're not very impressed, but uh, the company offers the company such a big check that the boss just goes like, yeah, John Cho's wife is going to be okay with this. Bring this fucking thing into your house, John Cho. There's a lot of benefits from Aya. However, she does go off the rails. We see that at the beginning of the film with another family. And then we go to cut to credits. It's it's actually one of those AI-induced credits that uh, a lot of people got pissy about for Secret Invasion. The, uh, the Disney Plus TV show that oh, yeah, yeah. nobody saw. Um, Give it to real artists, you bastards. Yeah. Well, they're they're definitely making a point with this. Right? I mean, I'm not going to say anything because we fucking use AI art for our. We we, we we danced that line. We definitely danced that line. We danced I don't think line. we crossed we fucking, it yet, but we danced oh, all over it. I'm fucking miles across that line at this point, dude. You're tango on that line. Or... Oh, I've got, I've got the AI artwork. I've got Lathan. Yeah. Your your AI game is like, pretty good. I, I feel like you're with AI music. coming out of the eyeballs right now. Yeah. I feel bad. So, anyways, they, they John Cho submits to his boss, and he's like, yeah, all right, we're going to bring the AI gimmick into the house. And he's still skeptical because AI. However, all of a sudden it starts fixing this problem, it fixes that problem, and diagnoses another problem. Oh, it one of the kids has derb. It taking their derbs. Yeah, there they are. But one diagnoses one kid has like a heart arrhythmia problem. Um, the oldest daughter is being pressured by her high school boyfriend to send her, send him nudes of her, and, and she ultimately submits. But then uh, that guy just like posts them all over the uh, internet, what and she's like, "What the fuck, dude? <laughs> but the, why? Why did you do that?" He's like, "You know, it's my buddy's idea." Um, I gets involved in that, flips the script, actually solves the problem. It does ultimately result in boyfriend driving off a cliff. Oh. Um, but you know what? He's such a cocksucker in this movie. You're just like, yeah, I'm okay with that. He's also the Wait, did he guy. drive off the cliff? No, 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 spoiler alert. But did he drive off the cliff as a way like he was so upset with how AI or AI, AI or whatever dealt with it? I took he... over the car. Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. He, he's driving a new model Tesla car. Or or whatever the, whatever the new gimmick is this day, uh, it but, but, but that that car that can be piloted right off the cliff. Anyways, um, the movie is silly. It could have been a sci-fi movie of the week, a uh, sci-fi channel. I I hate that sci-fi is now spelled S Y F Y. But it was been that way. That's for a the while. channel I'm talking about. For a while, I, I still hate it. But for some reason, Discovery has a side channel that also gets mixed up with TV Guide. Anyway, it does feel like some bits are missing from this, but that also explains why it's 84 minutes long. However, I'm not complaining. But with the narrative we have, John Cho like sees some shit and he's like, this bitch is ordering from betterhealth.com, like ordering me food bundles. That I didn't ask for without my... Per She's spending money on my account without me confirming that. Maybe it better is it, but I also just go like, it's going to save you money on shopping and save you time prepping for the children's meals. Um, but he's like, I got to take a bat to this bitch. <laughs> and so <laughs> he takes a takes the bat out of his trunk, walks into the thing, has a confrontation with two of the executives. One of them shoots... space with the photocopier? Kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, 
the laugh out loud moment for me, and I'm sorry, spoiler alert, kids, but for this movie that none of you are seeing right now, he smashes through the glass. Like at one point, they show him like this whole thing is the mainframe that Aya is encapsulated in. This is who you're talking to, John Joe, when you're at home. He's like, fuck that. Smashes the glass. One, my, my first impression was like, that glass was entirely too easy to shatter with just a baseball bat. And then he starts smashing the thing. And then he picks up the pieces and it's literally just like toilet paper rolls wrapped in uh, copper tin foil. And he's like, oh, it's been a trap the entire time. I, I, I was that goddamn smart. Long story short, the movie eventually ends. Again, there's one body in this whole film. Um, it's short. It's sweet. It is entertaining. It it's doesn't sweet. really mess. Yeah, it's, there's some sweet parts in it. It doesn't necessarily make any goddamn sense. I had a good time watching it. Again, maybe the 84 minutes is a part of that. So this is a three out of five. Um, John Cho is way better than this movie. So I don't know what this was when he was going into it. He's the best part of it, but he's he's better than this movie. He's better than this movie deserves. So, um, again, uh, Afraid is going to be probably be on Netflix. It's a Sony movie, so it's gonna, it's a Sony slash Blumhouse movie. Not So it's not going to be on Peacock. That's usually Blumhouse's big distributor, but it's a Sony movie, so it'll be on Netflix probably before Christmas. If you got 84 minutes to kill at home, I absolutely recommend you watch this dot, dot, dot at home. Three out of five. At any point in this movie, though, even though you say it's only 84 minutes long, which is nice, anything below two hours is always sweet relief. But does it, just from what you're describing, does this sound, even though it's 84 minutes, does at any point do you kind of like start looking at your watch being like, Dude, this this episode of Twilight Zone is really overstaying its welcome. It's really uh, come on. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought up. up the Twilight Zone. This could absolutely be a half hour. It could be, a it could be from the Twilight Zone. It could be a Tales from the Crypt episode. It could be a part of any anthology series. And 84 minutes, it's fine. I had a good time. But no, I never looked at my watch. The biggest problem I had with my screening was. I'm sitting where I'm sitting. And by the way, I'm on floor level. In front of me, people have to descend a couple steps. Above me, everybody has to descend all the steps. Some cunt decided to take his shoes off, although I think he was wearing slippers. And while he's maybe four feet above me, his feet are right here. And I'm just like, motherfucker, not only can I see your feet, but I can smell your feet. And then him and his girlfriend are talking. I think at one point he bl finger blasts her. Um, 15 minutes into the movie, though, I get up because it wasn't the, the most crowded showing. It was in a big, bigger theater than uh, what we saw Blink twice in. But I was just like, I don't want to start a conflict here. I don't want to stab this cunt in the fucking foot. So I just get up and I, I move over to another seat. But I'm just like, the audacity of people today, dude. Fucking keep your shoes on. Don't put them up on the goddamn feet. We aren't even recliners. All right. We don't even have recliners in this specific theater. And this guy decides, I'm not comfortable enough. I love how every week your movie review always features something where you think shitty happened to you in the movie theater. Like it's. Well, like maybe you need to go to a different movie theater. Because this sounds like a shitty movie theater with shitty clientele. It's the one of the newest theaters in San Francisco. It's got the best screens. It's uh, but people are Trash getting too goddamn people. comfortable. Too goddamn comfortable. Okay. So, anyways, the 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 worst thing about my screening of Afraid I, <laughs> is the dickhead who was behind me with his girlfriend, who were talking the entire time, and this cunt had to put his feet up on the the sound wall that separated us again he's still four feet above me but it's like i can smell your feet stupid the fuck is wrong with you so there you go a, a three afraid three out of five guy with stinky feet zero out of five
fuck off guys you don't need to be this comfortable be 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 keep your shoes on in the movie theater keep your shoes on and be inconvenienced for two fucking hours you cunt or 84 minutes if we've learned anything from this there's previews there's previews still keep your fucking shoes on dicks anyway uh let's wrap this week's episode up because i feel that we need especially kush because after the little therapy session we need to feel warm and fuzzy inside and it's now time for this week's feel good story of the week it's the coolest fucking story i've ever heard in my entire life that's insane This week's feel good story it was a bit of a long one. Uh, normally, I like to try to summarize, but uh, yeah, this one was a tough one. But uh, I'll get through it pretty quickly. It's a nice one. Um, so Kennedy Coke, a vibrant and resilient young warrior, has faced more challenges in her life than most people endure in a lifetime. Diagnosed with a rare form of cancer at just two years old, Kennedy has spent most of her childhood bravely battling the disease. It all began when a routine visit to urgent care for a common cold led to discovery of a lung tumor, a consequence of a rare genetic condition called DICER-1 syndrome. This syndrome makes it difficult for her body to suppress tumors, leading to multiple health battles. Despite the odds, Kennedy overcame her initial diagnosis, diagnosis, becoming miraculously cancer-free after enduring chemotherapy and numerous treatments. Amazing. However, oh dear, ah, I spoke too soon. Kennedy's journey took another difficult turn in January of 2024 when doctors discovered thyroid tumors during a routine scan. She underwent surgery and once again showed incredible resilience. But just six months later, her condition worsened and doctors found an aggressive uterine cancer. Oh, no. Now, at just 10 years old, Kennedy faces the daunting prospect of a hysterectomy followed by more chemotherapy. Jesus Christ. That's a lot. It's a fucking lot. Her mother, Jody Hillcoke, obviously felt that her daughter needed something to lift her up and give her some joy. Okay. So young Kennedy, a huge Taylor Swift fan, dreamed of attending the pop stars eras tour, but with the tour's tickets selling for thousands and thousands of dollars, Thanks, Ticketmaster, and your shitty dynamic pricing, you dicks. <laughs> I, I think that might also fall on Taylor Swift, too, but you can <sighs> go on. It seemed impossible. So a GoFundMe campaign was launched to help make Kennedy's dream come true, and the response was overwhelming. Strangers from all over the world donated more than $16,000. Wow. In a touching TikTok video... Jody surprised Kennedy with the tickets. As she handed her daughter the envelope, Jody told her, quote, a lot, a lot of people love you very much. Kennedy's face lit up with joy as she realized her dream had come true. Quote, Kennedy's dream came true after her first 12 weeks of chemo. She will be going to the Eras tour. Jody captioned the video. Kennedy will be attending Taylor Swift's concert on November 3rd, the final US tour, uh, date of the tour, and for Kennedy, this is just isn't a concert. It's a beacon of hope and a reminder that she is surrounded by love and support from countless people who believe in her strength. Boom! Bam. That's good so, yeah. so shout out to Kennedy, because good God, she has gone through more in her first fucking 10 years on this earth than I probably ever will. So, shout out to her, salute to her, and all jokes aside, where I I mock Taylor Swift, it's all fun and games. But seriously, hey, enjoy Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift got a, on November third. Of that story, she would have uh, she would have fucking did something special for her. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe there's maybe, maybe. Maybe. a part it, two it, only story she where Taylor it. Swift will hear it. Yeah, and uh, hit her up with some VIP shit. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so so Kennedy, enjoy Taylor Swift on November third, um, and fucking kick cancer's ass, as they say. 
because yeah. hashtag cancer is a cunt. That's fuck cancer. That's what I hate cancer so here. much. I'm gonna kick cancer in the balls, and then I hope it gets cancer. Wouldn't that be ironic? You cancer. Fuck you, cancer. Um, but that does wrap up another episode of Waffle Walks. Episode 165 of these bad okay. boys in the cane. Um, we will return for our September 11th special next week. Um, You're gonna bring down the house. Boom. Oh, damn. Double, Who said that? Who said that? I didn't say and that. You said boom. I didn't say, oh, fuck. I did. No, my bad. All right. Anyway. Uh Kush, I normally throw I to you myself. to promote no, something, no but you know, no plugs. No, I don't no, any plugs for that. You can go fuck yourself. Uh, I'm fucking myself. <laughs> oh, do that after the show. We don't want that on the Zoom. Uh, that's on our OnlyFans. Uh, but Leighton, produce the late fun. Uh, have you got any uh, final thoughts? You goddamn right, I have a final thought. Oh, so the other oh. night, I found an old Rubik's cube. And as I spent 30 seconds trying to solve it before throwing it in the trash out of pure frustration, I just couldn't help but wonder, what the fuck was Erno Rubik smoking when he came up with that idea? Like, seriously, that shit's been keeping me up at night. He was most likely on acid, if not mushrooms. Not, not necessarily smoking anything. He was on something different. It's like nine by nine cube, man. And it's got yellow, and it's got red, and it's got blue, and... Oh, dude, I, I bought I bought a new Rubik's cube that is all thumb based, Ugh. censored stickers. Ah, so it's just a black cube. Game's so gone. If you want to know what the, the original green cube is? You just gotta the facts, fucking ma'am. hold your thumb on it and like, oh, that's the green thing. All right. Yeah. Shit. So you have to warm it up to get the colors. Yeah. Oh, yes. I hate it. I hate it. Fuck your Rubik's cube. Anyway. Make sure you follow us at Wafflebox on Twitter, uh, Wafflebox Pod on Instagram. Uh, if you are watching the YouTube version, give us a thumbs up uh, so the algorithm fucks with people and gets us out. Or leave comment sections and all that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, if you are listening to us on the podcast platform, please leave us a nice review. Uh, we'd sure shit appreciate it. Uh, but until next time. Take care of yourselves. And each other. You are American? Yes. Oh, you must have very big penis. That's all, folks. Play me off, Johnny.